Today I want to automate bookkeeping, or at least the significant part of that role, especially if you're an accounting firm and you process invoices into lots of zero tenants, or maybe you're a serial entrepreneur and you just have lots of businesses and therefore lots of zero tenants. This is a, an enhancement on a workflow we did a few weeks back, processing invoices, which is really just targeted at one business. I think the easiest thing to do is dive into a demo and just show you what I'm talking about. Okay, so we're over in zero with an invoice that I've created and issued to Timecraft AI Limited for absolutely awesome IT services, charging them a thousand bucks. I wanted to point out to you, you see in this drop down list that I've got access to several tenants. Of course, if you're an accountant, you'll have loads and loads of tenants down here probably. But the one of the tenants is Timecraft AI, which is a deliberate slight mismatch between the company that's actually been invoiced here. And I've already gone ahead and in, uh, emailed this invoice over to the mailbox that we're monitoring and, and there's the invoice there and you can see the slight mismatch. So if we go over to NATN and I just want to demo the workflow for you. Because I've run it once before, I've got the data pinned here so I can just run it again. And it's picked up the invoice. And what I really want to show you or point out where the enhancement is on the previous workflow that we have created is we're uh, starting with a custom HTTP call, which is getting those three organizations that I've given access to on my workflow. And then there's a, a step in here where essentially an AI tools agent makes a decision on what is the closest tenant match so you see that the invoice is issued to timecraft ai limited and it's managed to make the inference that we should be putting this into timecraft ai's zero tenant so what i'll do now is i'll just jump back over to zero and jump into timecraft ai's uh, tenant and hopefully we'll see that that invoice has been processed correctly so if i go to business invoices and it will be in draft so let's have a look at the draft invoices so here we are in bills to pay and you see I've got the invoice with the correct amount to the correct tenant. If I go into it, there should be the correct tax applied, which there is. So the next thing to do is I'm going to dive over back to NATN and show you how to get this all hooked up for yourself. So we're over in NATN and what you want to do is create a new workflow and of course that will land you on a blank page. Now, rather than setting up every node from scratch and wasting hours troubleshooting and trying to get the workflow to, to where I've already got it. My high recommendation is just to sign up for the Timecraft AI community, jump over into the Agentic Templates uh, area on Classroom and find the bookkeeping invoices to multi zero tenants Agentic workflow and just download this JSON file here, hit download and you'll download it. And then when you jump back into NA10, you can simply hit uh, the three ellipses in the top right hand side and import from file. And that will take a moment and then I can just import the file that I have uh, saved before. There we go and it's appeared and then the next thing you'll need to do is go through all the nodes and hook up the authentication. So this time around I'm getting a little bit better at making notes of things that you need to do is I've made a list of authentications that you'll need to set up over the left hand side here and a couple of notes and things that you might want to consider editing. The other thing to point out is because I've imported this workflow into my N18 tenant with all the exact same credentials of the demo that I just showed you, the nodes have hooked up with the right credentials straight away. What you will see is a bunch of exclamation marks by most of these nodes, especially all of the ones with authentication and you'll need to go through them I recommend from left, left to right and make the appropriate edit. So without further ado, let's do that. Uh, what you'll need to do is open up the nodes for, let's say Outlook first and go to the credential here and you can see I'm monitoring a particular account, but you will have perhaps blank or perhaps other credentials. Create a new credential and this window will really depend on if you are self-hosting N18 or if you're using N18's hosted version. If you're using the hosted version, I believe you just get a connect button. So you can just hit connect and put in the credentials of the mailbox that you want to monitor and use the rocker switch if that is a shared mailbox or not. If you are self-hosting N18 like I am in my case, then you will need to fill in these URLs and I can put these in the notes with the template. So you also need to register an app in your Entra ID or Azure ID and get the client ID from that app and create a client secret and bring that client secret across. You don't need to set up any permissions on the Entra side because once you've got the client ID and the client secret and you fill in these details like, like so, you can hit connect to my account and the OAuth workflow will request permissions against your tenant. So when you authenticate, you can approve those at the permissions that you need. Once you've done that for one of the Outlook nodes, you can then just click into and then usually back out of all of the rest of the Outlook nodes because the correct authentication will already be chosen. But if you have multiple Outlook credentials in here, then you might need to change the drop downs because it might have automatically picked up some incorrect ones. But just click in and out until you resolve any authentication issues. The next thing I've 
called out here in the notes is that you're going to need an open router API key. So I know that this node here says open API and it is an OPA, open API node. But if I go into my open AI credential, really badly named here and edit it, and for you, you'd probably just be creating a new one. You can see that I've changed the base URL to open router AI API dash V1. I can put that URL in the, in the notes as well. And I've created an API key for open router not for open ai if you want to see the creation of the, all those all these api keys then i suggest you watch the previous zero automation video i don't want to go through all that again because it'll make the video too long the other thing i wanted to point out here and i guess partly why i'm using the open router key is i found that the anthropic llm models were so much better at figuring out which company was the debtor and what one was the creditor. So if you're playing with this and you're trying to get it to function for the cheapest, just wanted to point out a note that the open AI models, no matter what I put in the prompt, always got it the wrong way around. It was always invoicing the wrong company and thought that the invoice was coming from the wrong company. So it just got it the wrong way around. As soon as I changed that to Anthropic, it got it right every time without any additional prompt. So it made my prompt a lot simpler and therefore less tokens. The major enhancement on the previous workflow here, if you watch that video, or if you do go back and watch that video, is just basically this section has been chucked in. We're doing a custom HTTP call, as I sort of pointed out, and checking for all of the available tenants that you have. To make this connection, again, I recommend you watch the previous video, but you'll need to go over to Zero to and create an application in the Zero developer portal. You'll need to get the client ID and the client secret so that you can come and create this authentication here. You'll also need, and I should put these, I will also put these in the notes for you. Uh, you'll also need to get these URLs correct. You'll need, as I said, the client ID and client secret of the application that you are connecting. And you'll also need to get the scope correct. So I will copy and paste that also. So you can just copy and paste out of my notes. And then the rest should be, I think that's default, the header authentication. And that's it. So that will cover off all of your custom authentication, HTTP custom nodes, authenticating to zero. So anything that I've prefixed here with zero. So you just click in and into those and choose the OAuth2 authentication that you have created. And then the other piece of this is the zero nodes. I know that they're authenticating against the same place. So the same client ID and secret will be valid, but you won't need all the custom authentication, but you do need to create a separate uh, credential. So you end up with two credentials, an OAuth custom credential and a zero account credential for zero. So just go into here and fill in your client ID and secret and that's all that you need. Okay, and the final thing that you probably want to tweak on this workflow is the final node here. I've got a node that moves your processed email and for me I've got a, a folder called processed underscore invoices and that may or may not make sense to you but just be aware that you need to go create the folder that you plan to use and when you click into this node and choose the correct credentials just make sure you choose from the drop-down list so that you're choosing a valid folder. And for the demo that we just ran, I actually had this set to disable so that I could run the, the demo time and time again. I've just re-enabled that now. And if I rerun the workflow, uh, what should happen or what will happen is in my mailbox here, this email will get moved into this processed emails folder once it's complete so that I know if a workflow has essentially succeeded or, or something's gone wrong. I know something's gone wrong if I find that an invoice is sitting in my inbox for more than five minutes. So I just wanted to call that out. Hopefully uh, that covers everything and helps you automate or save you some time in terms of bookkeeping and administrative tasks. If there's anything else you want me to automate in particular with zero or in accounting practices or just other general business workflows that's gonna save you, even if it's minutes per person per day, they all add up, let me know in the comments and I'll take a look at those workflows for you. Until next time, have a good one.